Set in a post-apocalyptic future where humans had migrated to shelters in outer space, this movie was focused on the creation of an AI being based on a formidable soldier called Captain Yun, who was on the verge of stopping the civil war between the Allied forces and the Adrian Republic. However, with the AI needing to stop the war, things kept going wrong and grinding the process to a halt. Whilst on the surface level, this movie was about what I just mentioned, it was actually far deeper than that and was actually focused on grief, feelings towards a machine, the distinguishing factors in what makes something human, and the love that one can have for another. So with that, I thought I'd recap, break down, and explain all that there was to take away from this movie. So let's get into it. Here is Zhang Yi ending explained. Just to let you know, this video will contain spoilers. This movie was based around Chronoid, a robotics company creating an AI soldier that they believed would be able to end the civil war that was unfolding throughout civilization between the Allied forces and the Adrian Republic, which now consisted of shelters 8, 12, and 13. We had team leader Yun, who was working on the project, but it was extremely close to home for her. This was due to the fact that her mother was Captain Yun, the person that the company was basing their AI off of, due to the fact that she came the closest that anybody had ever come to ending the Civil War. As we embarked on the end of the movie, we saw that the chairman of the company was looking at shutting the project down. This was due to the fact that a treaty had been signed between the two sides and it was looking as though the war was going to be over. This then meant that all of the work that went towards creating the best soldier was going to be put towards a different area. And this was focused more on the domestic side of things. Things like having a robot around the house to complete chores for individuals. This then meant that Captain Yun's brain and programming, Team Lady Yun's mother, would be utilized in a different way. And we saw one of those ways was of the adult nature. This was due to the fact that when a person decides that they want to transfer their brain over to a robot shell in order to live forever, there are actually three different categories that they could choose. Category A, which essentially meant that they were treated as a human. Category B, which meant that the government and companies would have access to your brain for data purposes. And then Category C, which is where the government would essentially own the right to your brain. This was what Chronoid had of Captain Yun due to the fact that Category C was selected for her. Team Lady Yun was suffering from a terminal illness and only had three months left to live so she was facing the moral question of what she should do, as it seemed as though she didn't really want to transfer over. We heard in conversation with the chairman how he didn't believe in it, because even if there was a copy of the brain inside of it, it was still hollow on the inside, showing that the fibers that make up who we are make us human beings, and I believe in the end she felt that too, with her looking like she wasn't going to make any decisions and that she was going to die naturally. With Team Lady Yun worrying that her mother resented her as she only went to battle one final time due to the fact that she needed to pay for her operation that was needed in order for her to survive, we saw that her mother didn't resent her at all in the final moments of the movie. When Team Lady Yun awoke a version of her mother, we saw that she informed her that she was dying and that she was going to die peacefully. But before she did, Captain Yun asked if her daughter survived the operation and that she wanted to be by her side when she awoke showing that there was no resentment embedded within her whatsoever. The yellow side that was unlocked in the brain was the memory of her daughter, and it was the very thing that gave her the fight to go on and try to survive. With the thought of the different copies of her mother being utilized everywhere for many different reasons, Team Lady Yun wanted to free a version of her and allow her to go on and live some kind of life, even if it was on her own. So with that, we saw her devise a plan that when Captain Yun was in sleep mode, she spoke to her and told her what to do. Within the simulation, Captain Yun was always hit and died at the same spot, so Team Lady Yun told her mother to fake what normally occurred, and then she'd be able to break free. We saw that it initially worked due to the fact that her eyes moved, something that they never did in that state. With the police being called and the alarms being sound, we saw that Team Lady Yun moved her mother's brain over to one of the advanced AI shells so that she'd be able to sneak out in disguise. And it was from this moment where we saw an epic battle occur between Captain Yun and the director of Chronoid, Sang Hoon, where he eventually went on to find out himself that he was created by the chairman as an experiment, which then saw a fight scene that was filled with ups and downs, great camera work, and choreography, which ultimately saw Team Lady Yun injured and Sang Hoon falling to his death as the train dropped hundreds of feet from the sky. 
We also had a twist here as well, where we saw that Team Lead Eon removed the memory of her mother having a daughter from her brain, so that she'd be able to go on and live a life freely without holding on to anything from the past. However, with the authorities closing in and Team Lead Eon's life slowly fading away due to her injury, we saw that her mother gave her the cheek rub that she gave her before she had her surgery, showing that the memory was still within there and that she knew that she was her daughter, despite not saying that she ever was. It was quite an emotional moment. With that, we then saw Captain Yun in this newfound form depart from the train and we last saw her overlooking a vast landscape where it looked as though she would be free. And then within the train, we had Team Lady Yun stating that she wished her mother the best of luck as it looked as though she was going to succumb to her injuries. I thought it was a powerful ending that showed that even though it wasn't the human version of her mother, she still viewed her as her mother, cared for her, and wanted the best for her. And with the way that Captain Yun acted by giving the cheek rub, it showed that she was inside of the shell, and that it went against what the chairman said, how they can be just like humans. I thought this movie was pretty good. I was surprised if I'm being honest. I thought it was going to be focused on a space battle taking place, but it was far deeper than that. The morality around what is human or not, even if it contains the brain, was a question that was constantly put to us, and it was never answered. But that was deliberate, because it's down to us to decide. Based on what we saw in the movie, you'd say that they were all human apart from the shell, but I imagine there would be others that would think otherwise. The fight scenes within this movie were incredible to watch. The opening sequence was really gripping and I was impressed with how menacing they could make that giant robot. I really felt the suspense and the unpredictability of what was going to happen in that opening scene. The score behind this movie was also something that I feel definitely needs to be spoken about as it was extremely well suited in evoking the emotions that it needed to in the right moments. For me, in the final scene, I thought it was so well suited and provided an eerie, dystopian, haunting sound over the top of watching a daughter die and a version of the mother surviving. What also made it more impactful was the fact that it was Kang So Hyun's last movie appearance before she sadly passed away, so it made it hit even harder. I was a big fan of this movie. They nailed the sci-fi world that needed to be created in a not-so-distant future. It contained performances that were handled delicately and were well-crafted to be well-suited to the style of movie that it was. And it provided a thought-provoking subject that could well be facing humankind in a few hundred years. With a short runtime, it managed to get everything inside of it that it needed to in order to make the viewers feel connected to the characters and allow the ending to hit with the impact that it needed. I definitely enjoyed it. So... There you have it, Zhang Yi Ending Explained. If you want to see more videos such as Endings Explained, Theories and Predictions and Character Breakdowns, then click on the I button. Or alternatively, you can head over to my channel where you'll find them all. What did you think of this movie? Leave a comment down below. And don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.